um, okay, beta equals square root of p critical divided by e i. This equals 2 pi over L. Okay, this beta. So from here, p critical we just will be um, 4 pi square L square e i. So that is uh, one result, but I have to check still I have second equation. So maybe this, maybe this is p critical. That is a candidate, so to say. This guy is a candidate. Now I have a second equation. Eight. Tangens beta L over 2 equals beta L over 2. Let us denote beta L over 2 like x. OK, now no, z. So equation is tangens z equals z. So let us, let us make this figure, tangens z. So that is pi over 2 minus pi over 2, and this guy goes like this. And one, that is pi over 2. Then there is this pi, and there is 3 pi over 2. That is pi, etc. Now, uh, so this is what? What is this function? So that is tangens z. I do know. I, I made the figure. I also will make a figure of z. Okay. So z then is like this. So solution is zero, but this zero solution is also does not lead to non-zero p. So this guy is a solution. This one. So this is approximately, so this root z equals, so it is a bit smaller than 3 pi over 2. OK? So all 1.5 pi. And the value actually is 4.49. If you want three, four, zero, nine, four, five, eight. One of the students calculated in the past. So then this is uh, then beta L over two equals four forty nine approximately. Then from here, beta now beta equals what? P critical over EI times L divided by two equals 449. So then we are squaring this. OK, we, first of all, we rewrite down this. P critical over EI equals 2 times 449, yes? So then it is 898 divided by L. So now this should be squared. So P critical then equals 898 squared. E i over L squared. So solution is either what we got before or this. Minimum, smaller. P critical is minimum of 4 pi square E i over L squared and 898 square E i over L squared. Now, so this is about 40, this guy. And this is about 81, 9 squared. So p critical equals 4 pi square e i over l square belongs to Lagrange, famous French engineer. We should be appreciative to French, 
for giving us this formula. Okay, any questions? So this is four times bigger than for simply supported case. Now, just because I have it here, I would like to give you a quote from Euler. Ten. Quote from Euler. 1744. Can you imagine? It was a long time ago. So that is 265 years ago. So what he says is as follows. Uh, maybe I just will write it down. I will put this page here. At first glance, it would seem that such a force, no matter how large, would never cause the column to bend. Because there would be no reason why the column should bend in either one sense or another. Means in one direction or another. That was simply supposed. But the slightest variation in the dimensions of the column, or the slightest force applied, no matter from what side, would furnish sufficient cause to induce buckling in a special direction. Nevertheless, I state, can you imagine, he says, you guys listen, I am stating to you, and I am telling you that that is how things will be coming. I state that so long as the force or the load which the column supports does not exceed the quantity that is pi square e i over a l square. Okay, that is how they wrote. We need have no fear that the column will suffer even the smallest deflection, but a heavier load will not fail to cause bending, and the more so, the more the load exceeds the quantity pi square e i over l square. Okay, so he did not derive this expression by solving differential equation. I mean, he probably did on some page, but he thought that that was probably trivial, so he did not write how he calculated. Only later, I think 15 years later, he came back to that problem, and then he wrote exactly how he got this, 15 years. Because at that time, when you write something, then suddenly someone may say, come on, I did it before you, etc." So Euler was very clever. He waited some years. Let you guys tell me how to get this formula. You cannot tell me that you got this formula. That, my, that is mine, etc. Any questions about this? OK, so that is what he wrote about. <coughs> but differential equation derivations, etc was given by Lagrange, who was very fr in friendly relations with Euler, etc. When Euler left Berlin Academy of Sciences, he recommended to the emperor that Lagrange be appointed as a president of Berlin Academy of Sciences. OK, we will have a very short discussion today about something that we dealt past time, and that is vibrations of two span beam and I will leave time beam uh, I will leave time for discussions about homework etc later so we dealt past time extensively with such a beam okay so beam that is simply supported here And it is simply supported here. And here it rests on a support. <coughs> rests on support. And here lengths are the same. Now, I ask you to verify at home that frequency equation is a product of two expressions. One expression times second expression, and this equals 0. 
Now, first expression pertains for simply supported beam of length L. Second equation pertains to beam that is simply supported and clamped. <coughs> now, unbelievable um, conclusions come from here. This beam has infinite number of frequencies. This beam also has infinite number of frequencies. So two span beam has two series of frequencies. So it has frequencies of this guy and frequencies of this guy. So as it were, it has two times infinite number of frequencies. So how, how, uh, how, what happens is as follows. Say, let us say we have omega 1 simply supported. Then we have omega 2 simply supported, omega 3 simply supported, omega 4 simply supported, omega 5 simply supported, etc. That is for this first series. Then we have omega 1 simply supported clamped, omega 2 simply supported clamped, omega 3 simply supported clamped, omega 4 simply supported clamped, omega 5 simply supported clamped. Now what happens for a two span beam, two span simply supported beam at ends. What happens is very interesting. So they are mixed with each other. This guy is bigger than this, but smaller than this. So what happens is as follows. Look, I will be using two colors. Omega 1 SS, then, uh, okay, let, let me, then Omega 2 SS, and this, then Omega 3 SS, then Omega 4 SS, Omega 5 SS. And here will be Omega 1 simply supported clamped, Omega 2 simply supported clamped, Omega 3 simply supported clamped, Omega 4 simply supported clamped, and Omega 5 simply supported clamped, etc. So these are the frequencies of this two span beam. That is, that is it seem, at least to me, it's mind-boggling conclusion. Uh, why it's mind-boggling? So it has, first of all, it contains in itself spectrum of two one-span beams. So that is mind-boggling. It contains in itself spectra. Oh, spectra means frequencies. Spectra means all frequencies. Of spectra of um one span beams is two span beam so very very nice conclusions come from from this consideration i will assign you just one homework i'm saying just but um, yes it is just one Homework set, what is a homework set? 18. I have now clamped, clamped beam with one support here. This is L, this is L. 
obtain frequency determinant for two span beam show that it it can be represented as a product okay now what is this this guy has to do with clamped clamped single span beam This guy has to do clamped, simply supported single span beam. Okay. So in this case, also we have, I mean, spectrum of the whole st the structure contains two subspectra, like like we can say um, picturesquely that it has two times infinite amount of frequencies. Or what we can say is that if you take large frequency span, you have two times more frequencies there than you would have just for simply for clamped clamped beam or simply supported clamped beam. There will be twice as much frequencies. We can say density increases two times, approximately. Density increases, density of frequencies. So this is like, this is not unlike like this, pay attention. There is this notion of infinite hotel. Say, imagine there is a hotel with infinite number of rooms. But before that, imagine that there are finite number of rooms. Say, imagine 100 rooms. So imagine you come there to the hotel, and you say, I would like to check in. They will say, we are very sorry. We cannot check you in because all rooms are occupied. Fine. Then you, but you can go to another hotel, which is in front of us. They have infinite number of rooms. OK. So you go to infinite number of room hotel. You knock there at the door, and they ask you, you ask them, I would, we would like to check in. They imagine that they say, sorry, the rooms are occupied. And then you say, no, no problem. It's, Please take the person from first room into second room. Person from second room into third room. From third room to fourth room, etc. Do it ad infinitum. Then first room will be empty. So then you enter there. And so there is, there is a room, despite the fact that the hotel is occupied. Now imagine 100 people come to such a hotel. Then you say, as I say, I, we are sorry, it's occupied. Then you say, no problem. Take, please, first people into 101st room, second into 102nd room, third into 104th room, etc. So by this means, you are emptying first 100 rooms, and you can come. And now imagine that you are coming, you have a, some celebration, and therefore, I mean, say, family reunion for Thanksgiving, and your family contains infinite number of people. So, and you are a rich Floridian, so you invited all of them to that hotel. So then you come and they say it's occupied. You say it's no problem. Please take first person into the second room, okay? Second person into fourth room, third person into sixth room, etc. You will get infinite number of rooms empty, then you can put your company there, okay? So this is like this. First, I mean, clamped clamped beam has infinite number of frequencies. Clamped simply supported also has infinite number of frequencies. But two span beam has two times infinite number of frequencies, so that actually all these frequencies are moving around to accommodate this new entity, which is two span beam. That idea of that hotel belongs to a German mathematician, David Hil Hilbert. Okay. So that is called Hilbert Hotel. Thank you very much.